talk about describing warm dark matter with the reduced relativistic gas. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so thank you very much, uh, the organizers, for the opportunity to talk about this talk, uh, this topic. And right here. Okay. So I will talk about how to describe warm dark matter with the so-called uh, reduced relativistic gas. So this is a talk based on this, this work here uh, with Jival uh, Pordeus da Silva and Leo uh, Medeiros. We are all from uh, Federal University of uh, Rio Grande do Norte. All right, so this is the outline. Uh, I'll talk a bit uh, about the history of this, uh, this model and the, the basics, the main ideas of it. Uh, then, I'll discuss some papers that treat uh, this RRG, reduced relativistic gas, as a perfect fluid, and some applications that were done in this context. Then this is something we developed, uh, the Einstein-Boltzmann equations for, for RRG, and then uh, discuss some uh, effects of warm dark matter, how to describe this inside this uh, framework, and then conclude. All right, so... This is a rather old idea uh, proposed in 1966 by Sakharov. So it was um, uh, an idea uh, to interpolate between matter uh, radiation dominated and matter radiate, uh, dominated errors. Uh, I'll put that in, in, in more specific terms, but the, the basic idea is to consider a gas with um, where the particles all have the, the same uh, momentum, okay? Then, much later, uh, it was revived in uh, uh, 2005 uh, in cosmology by these people uh, that work here in Brazil. Um, it, the, the same idea also appeared in uh, relativistic fluid dynamics. And a bit later, we, we came to note this, uh, not to... Uh, very recently, um, some in 2010, there, there was this uh, idea of bound dark matter, which has more or less the same, the main idea of, of that, but we couldn't talk to, to these people uh, to really uh, make some uh, proper uh, discussion about this. But, um, so, it was applied to studies of warm dark matter, photon baryon fluid, uh, neutrinos, and also relativistic uh, fluid uh, dynamics. So uh, what I will show here is mostly related to, to, to warm uh, dark matter, but uh, for sure you can uh, find some interesting applications in, in other scenarios. Okay, so this is the, the main idea of RRG. It's a gas. Uh, where all the particles have the same momentum magnitude. So you have the energy, the relativistic energy. You take the momentum from here, and then you, you make just basic net theory. You, <coughs> you compute the pressure that these particles make to, to some, some wall, and then you compute the pressure. This is the kind of expressions you get here in terms of rest mass and total energy. And from this, you can uh, define some rho d, which is um, a rest mass energy density uh, and the total uh, energy. So this is the equation of state we are going to use for most purposes. Uh, if you plug this equation of state in uh, friedman hobertson walker metric, you get this uh, behavior, which is just an interpolation from uh, hot to cold fluid. So if you take B0, you, you get just A to minus 3, and this is uh, the, the, the cold energy density, right? Then uh, with higher B, these terms, uh, this term is more important, and you get relativistic uh, uh, evolution. Uh, there appears here some A of reference, which you can choose. Actually, what is important is, is uh, B over A ref. 
Um, and for the, the rest of the talk, you, you can just think about this as one. Okay, no, no problem about this. So B is, is a parameter which is related to the warmness of, of this fluid. So if you, if you take it zero, it's, it's cold. If you take uh, some value for this uh, larger than, than, than zero, uh, then you, you introduce some warmness in the fluid. This is related to B. Okay. When you choose B, then you, you choose the initial uh, energy. Uh, It, it, this is not, um, this is you, you can, the approximation is that you have a gas and all particles have the same momentum magnitude, then everything else follows from that. My question is, why this approximation and none of the approximation that modifies the exponent of mm -hmm. A? This is, I hope, uh, I will compare this to relativistic Maxwell-Boltzmann, which is, which is, pretty standard, and then you see that the, the error is pretty small. Okay. So the, the, the physical content of this, I think, is, is very strong. But this is an approximation, right? Because uh, we have an expansion of the power law. No, no, this, this, is, is, this is a solution. You just need to, yeah, it's an exact solution. You, you include this in the uh, continuity equation for friedman hobbiston walker metric, and you get this, it's a solution. Okay. And then you have this parameter B, okay. which, which, which will tell you how warm is, is, is your fluid, how, how hot is it. Uh, yep. Physically, how do you realize the gas in which the particles have more or less the same momentum? So this is very strong approximation. But in the end, it's not bad. I will show you it's, it's not bad in terms of uh, energy density. So this is the evolution you get. So this is the equation of state in terms of B and A. So you may think this is one, no, no problem. Here is, is A ref, but uh, it's plotted with A over A ref. So this is also related to the thermal velocity of uh, the fluid. So you will start, when you, you have A over A ref small, your fluid is hot, it's one third, then it decays. So if you take B, B equal, equal one, then the transition uh, happens around here, then for smaller before, for B uh, bigger later, right? So a bigger B is a hotter gas, so it stays in the relativistic uh, evolution for more time and then it starts to decay, all right? So uh, this is something important for the, the, the rest of the talk. Uh, the transition occurs uh, when B is, is roughly the same of A. Okay, uh, I'll first show the one application of this, and then I, I, I show the, the relation with the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Okay, so uh, some of those guys that proposed that for cosmology studied uh, perturbations on this model. So they, here you, you might think it's a parameterization for the, the pressure perturbation, which um, you don't perturb the, the, the densities that appear uh, here. You, you take this as a constant, only the first part. It, they choose that. This is the result they, uh, they get. So this is for B squared time, uh, 10 to minus six. Then you see damping oscillations as you would expect from a, a, a hot fluid. Uh, then, uh, of course, this is off uh, uh, related to the matter power spectrum quite a lot. But then when you start to reduce this, this thing goes here and starts to fit everything. So they get a, a, a lower bound on, on this uh, B squared uh, using uh, this uh, data. So then you think, okay, how accurate is that? Uh, and then you can compare this RRG with Maxo, relativistic Maxwell-Boltzmann. Then this is the equations you have for a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution done uh, many time ago. So here you start to see the problem uh, the, the difficulties in, in using Maxwell-Boltzmann is that uh, you can include uh, pressure here, but you have uh, modified Bessel functions here. 
So there is no, uh, 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 no easy expression for the equation of state in this description. Okay? But then um, we compare these, which should be exact, okay? uh, with RRG. And uh, what you get is the maximal error is like 2.5% in this regime here. So here goes P over rho D, the rest energy density. Okay, so here you go to relativistic regime. Here you, you, you are in the cold regime. This is the error in the thermal velocity is even smaller. Okay, so the maximum error you, you, you have is two, around 2.5%. So as I, I told you, it, it, you say all particles have the same moment. Okay, that's impossible. Yeah, but the error assume to, uh, <laughs> when you assume that the error turns out to be very small. Okay, and you get much simpler expressions for uh, densities, the, the cosmological evolution of densities. Okay. All right. Uh, later, some some people um, studied the perturbations again. Now they use this prescription for pressure perturbation with the adiabatic sound speed. So it's a P dot over rho dot. Um, so they have this fluid. They included it in class and get uh, the transfer function of it, uh, which is here. There are two transfer functions here. Uh, the other one is this. Uh, they are essentially the same. Uh, so these other transfer functions that they are comparing here is uh, the, um, this both the Ostricker Turok uh, transfer function, which this is interesting, uh, which was, uh, it's a fit for thermal relics using full Weistein-Boltzmann equations, okay? So you have two parameters here. Usually you can set uh, this value for thermal relics. Uh, alpha is related to the mass and other cosmological parameters. Uh, so people use that quite a lot to, to study warm dark matter. And when you get the transfer function of RRG, your error is uh, below 1% until K10. So, uh, of course, you have to choose some parameter. Here is B squared 10 to minus 15. Um, so, so if you fit this um, parameter to, to match this other transfer function, you can relate the, the masses here and have some mass relation, uh, a B mass relation for RRG. Uh, I was only talking about B, now I can talk about mass, okay? Um, this is the relation in KV scale. So M is going to be to my, um, with B, minus four-fifth, uh, and here they include also uh, CMB data. Uh, it, it's not a statistical analysis, just um, if I remember well. Uh, they, they, they see that uh, they start to fit the CMB spectrum with uh, B squared less than 10 to minus 10. Okay, so uh, also note that uh, the scales where the departure appears is, is, is very high, uh, uh, very high K, very small scales. Okay. Can you explain this a little bit more? So this is coupled per megaparsec, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. K is H uh, megaparsec inverse. So do I think about this in terms of how far do I see this effect in galaxies? Or? So this is all today. Uh, the, the, so usually I'll show some some uh, where data appears in the, the K scale. So you have CMB, matter power spectrum, and uh, uh, the lowest scales will be probed by Lyman Alpha Forest, which is around here, is very small uh, scales. So uh, yeah, in cosmology, you, you so let, let's like say, scale. yeah. So this is, these are very large scales where you probably observe CMB on such scales, then let's say matter power spectrum is around here, then it's, for sure there's no linear scales. That would be uh, something for uh, clusters and maybe galaxy scales. <clears throat> but uh, in principle you can observe something in the, with the linear power spectrum on, on, on these scales. So may, may I suggest 
Yeah. Mm. But then the parameter P that you plot it there is related like that. To the mass? Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. And th there is another um, relation uh, I'll show. So uh, this relation, uh, you get fitting transfer functions, OK? And then there is a more like first principles relation with our show. It's not very much different than this. So this is another B mass relation. Then, okay, it's a bit different, but you get lots of physical insight about how to relate B and mass, okay? <clears throat> so this is, this is not in, in our paper. Okay, so there are some assumptions. Uh, first, you assume that RRG and Maxwell Boltzmann uh, have the same energy now. Uh, then you assume uh, there's a sharp transition in Maxwell Boltzmann uh, density uh, from ultra-relativistic to non-relativistic, so this is, is uh, uh, an approximation around the, the when temperature is, is, is at the same order of mass. Uh, then you assume back in the uh, early universe, uh, Maxwell Boltzmann is in equilibrium with photons around the nucleosynthesis era, a bit before. Uh, and then, this is reasonable, uh, you assume that uh, the mass of RRGs is much higher than photon temperature. Today. And this, with all these assumptions, this is the mass relation you get. So instead of uh, minus four uh, fifths, you get minus one, B minus one, more or less the same. So here are, are, are the two. So here we run B squared, and here you have uh, mass in KV scale. So uh, probably the most interesting area is around here, a few KV, two or three. So you are about 10 to minus 13, 10 to minus uh, 14 b squared, okay? Uh, all right, so we decided to, to understand why oh, I have a per, uh, uh, why I have a perfect fluid and it fits well Einstein-Boltzmann equations. So let's write the Einstein-Boltzmann equations for RRG and see what happens, if, if you can get some understanding of what's going on. So the idea is pretty simple. You also have a distribution function, but it's a delta of Dirac, okay? So here is for the background, then you have a background momentum. All the particles, when you integrate this, all the particles have the same p-bar uh, momentum. Then you want to study perturbations on top of this. Then there is a uh, momentum perturbation here. Then you expand this to first order. Then uh, we, uh, we choose this uh, momentum contrast, we call this M. Uh, all equations will appear as a function of m. Um, then you have this uh, distribution function. You can plug that in the uh, energy momentum tensor and, and get the fluid quantities out, out of this. So uh, one nice thing we get is that uh, we can relate uh, pressure and, uh, um, and density. And this expression is exactly the adiabatic sound speed they, the, the other paper uh, uh, chose. Okay, then you, you, you get also an isotropic stress, uh, also with the, the, the CA. Uh, this M2 is, is a multipolar expansion for this. I'll, I'll talk a bit more uh, about this. Um, so when you have the distribution function, you, you, you can introduce an isotropic stress. The model is not uh, perfect fluid anymore. So um, we work in the Newtonian gauge. Um, then the equations will be for ML, which is a multipolar expansion. So there is some integrations with Legendre polynomials in K space. Uh, mu is uh, the angle between the, the vectors. Uh, and these are the, so from this you, you get the usual uh, uh, equations for the potentials, okay, uh, nothing different. Uh, but then here you have the, um, the Boltzmann equations for this model. Uh, so the structure is, is, is pretty much the same as what you, you get for, for photons or, or neutrinos. Uh, you have uh, M0 equation uh, coupled to M1 then M1 to M2 and M0, 
And then for L uh, two and higher, you have this structure for the equations, okay? So these are the full equations. Now, let's go to the warm approximation to see if uh, we can understand something. So the idea is I expand rho over rho d as one plus x, with small x, of course. And then when you do that, you get order zero here and order x one half. This would be the code description, the first terms that appear for a fluid. Then if you go one order higher here, then you get pressure and you get an isotropic stress. You might also consider some correction here for V. Uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, this is what you get uh, for the, the perturbations for uh, sound velocity, uh, sound speed uh, in this warm approximation. So this is a very simple relation. It's linear with B and inverse with A. So as A grows, the, the sound speeds go down, okay? As expected. Yeah, B, B and A, uh, scale factor, A is scale factor, and B is the parameter that. Is the parameter yeah. That. So, uh, within this approximation, this is what you can write for Master Boltzmann equations. Uh, sorry, Boltzmann equations. Then you can clearly see CS uh, around K. Here, 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 also here. Uh, so if you want to, to describe warm fluid, uh, something that's a bit away from cold, um, you expect this to be small, so uh, CS to be small, then the time variation of uh, these functions uh, is not, uh, it's not big. So they are order of eta, the conformal time that I'm um, using in the metric. Um, and so you can see that uh, higher multiples will become important whenever this quantity is, is, is uh, above one. So this, these coupling terms will become uh, more important. Then you need to, to more and more multiples to describe your... Eta is the conformal time around here, here. Is, is the metric in the conformal time. And all derivative, uh, these derivatives are respect to it, okay? Uh, so let's uh, plug some numbers. Um, uh, it turns out that uh, this uh, um, CS K times zeta is essentially the same of uh, uh, the free streaming scale. Okay, so I plug the, um, the sound speed here. This is what you get for the free streaming scales for neutrinos, okay? Yeah, uh, sorry. Okay. Consider neutrinos, then you define the free streaming scale there. And uh, the, the thing I, I was considering here, uh, sorry, here is essentially the same. Then I'm using the CS here that I got from warm approximation here. And this is what I get. Uh, then you plug numbers for, let's say, beta squared times to minus 14, which will give you mass around KV scale. Then this free streaming scale is something like this, uh, 10 to the third uh, H megaparsec inverse, pretty large K, very, very small scale. Uh, you can be a, a little bit more conservative and say, well, uh, let's consider the, the sound horizon of this, uh, the scale up to which a bunch of particles can propagate in the universe. So you get this kind of integral here. Uh, now CS goes inside the integral. Uh, and again, what you get is something that is very large, 12 uh, H megaparsec inverse for, the, again, this B squared K, okay? So I hope at this point, this shows why, let me come back a bit. Oh, not much. Here. Uh, 
why these things uh, agree so well? Because here you are considering full Weistein Boltzmann equations. In this paper, they consider a perfect fluid with, with the, the, the sound speed that we got from the distribution function. Uh, and you start to see some depart of these transfer functions for k uh, higher than 10. And uh, as we found here, higher multiples will become important for this kind of scales. And this is the conservative estimate. Here is, I'm also considering a lambda CDM background. This is more or less order of magnitude estimate. Here is more, is more precise. So uh, in this mass scale, the effects beyond perfect fluid are uh, happening in very, very small scales. Okay? Of course, if you have something that's more relativistic than that, lighter mass, then things might change uh, a lot. So this, um, let's put that in perspective with uh, so observations. Remind, remind me, uh. some oscillator I can listen to. What is the size of our galaxy more or less? Uh, galaxies are around uh, 100 uh, uh, kiloparsecs. 100 kiloparsecs. So and uh, yeah, then clusters around megaparsec. And uh, here is uh, the power spectrum uh, across different scales and some observations. Um, this is uh, rather old, but uh, we'll give you an idea about uh, uh, where we, we should focus, all right? Uh, so here are pretty large scales. Then you have uh, cosmic ray CMB observations around here. Then uh, linear power spectrum. Then you can also have weak lensing. And then to the smallest uh, scales, you have observations in Lyman alpha forest. Okay? Um, th there is a paper. They actually use that uh, bold transfer function to, to, to uh, give this number. Uh, there's a constraint uh, about uh, the mass should be higher than 3 keV. Okay? Uh, I'm just rephrasing the, this uh, KS, the uh, scale of the uh, related to the sound horizon. This constraint, you gave us a bound on B, and in relation with the. Can translate into that 3KV or is it more So this was done using that. Um, Bode the transfer function uh, that, that is a fit to the full Einstein Boltzmann equations. Okay? Uh, so they get this number. Now I have a relation, uh, um, there is a B and mass relation, then I can, I can uh, <clears throat> use this here, then I get this. So if you plug 3 kV here, you, you get 12 again. So B time to uh, B squared uh, 10 to equal to 10 to minus 14 is essentially 3 kV. This is the lowest bound you have for warm dark matter. It's a very general idea. Let's test how warm is uh, dark matter. Then you, you get this. So, uh, and you see that uh, the scales here are around 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe 6K around this. Maybe in the future, I don't know, uh, you, you need something higher than that. So the, the conclusion here is that for this kind of uh, particles, it's essentially a perfect fluid. There's, you wouldn't need to, to solve all Einstein-Boltzmann equations to, to get some, some constraints on that. Uh, all right, so let's think of uh, how this, how can I set initial conditions for, for this model? Um, so, as I told you before, the warm approximation breaks. Um, so this is the, the scale of transition between uh, hot and cold. So the warm approximation is breaking in between this, this time. Okay? Um, so considering this uh, beta uh, B squared 10 to minus 14, which is related to a uh, few kV mass, uh, you see that uh, these particles become relativistic for eight uh, less than 10 to minus seven, okay? 
So if you want to set initial conditions in a, uh, in a nucleosynthesis, a post nucleosynthesis like 10 to minus 9, then your particles are relativistic at this time. Then you can use uh, essentially the same thing as uh, the initial conditions for massless neutrinos. Okay? The, the, the energy is much higher than the mass, so they are relativistic as would be massless neutrinos. Uh, when this situation breaks, um, it, it, let's consider this M, one MeV scale, which is a bit uh, lower than uh, a bit lower than uh, nucleosynthesis. Then you have uh, A higher than this, and then if you plug this with this, you get the mass should be uh, higher than 400 kV. So this is uh, telling us that if you have some uh, dark uh, matter model which mass is higher than 400 kV, it's uh, non relativistic uh, in the beginning uh, around the nucleosynthesis era. Okay. Uh, you can also play with that, make some pedagogical uh, figure. Uh, let's consider a universe with only uh, RRG because now this in can interpolate from uh, radiation to, to matter error. So I can uh, use RRG in, in the Einstein equations and solve for the potential. And then you choose B to make this transition from radiation to, to matter, okay? Then uh, for B time to minus two, you get uh, this uh, later, then this is um, uh, smaller. Uh, so so uh, this thing is uh, 10 to minus 4, 10 to minus 2. So this is um, a higher value, so the transition occurs later. Okay, then you, you have the, the, just the same thing. Uh, the potential is constant on uh, very large scales, then uh, it enters the horizon, oscillates, and these are for larger scales, so it's, it, you don't see these oscillations. And uh, how many minutes? I think I'm a bit ahead then. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you some more minutes of lunch. Uh, <laughs> all right, so these are the, the main conclusions, uh, just rephrasing. Uh, RG is, is very simple but precise uh, to interpolate between ultra relativistic and non relativistic regimes of a gas. Okay, so it's uh, the most precise thing would be relativistic uh, Maxwell Boltzmann, but it's, a, it's more complicated. This is much simpler and at the cost of 2.0% error. Uh, for warm dark matter applications, RRG framework shows dissipative effects are very small. That you, you don't need full Einstein-Boltzmann equations for, for this kind of thing. So maybe you, you come up with some uh, uh, dark matter model and you want to, to see the effects on the structure formation, the, the evolution of potentials, you might have some idea just plugging uh, the mass, uh, relating mass with B and then getting the pressure perturbations and see how things work uh, without uh, solving all uh, Einstein uh, Boltzmann equations. Uh, and it's much better to use RRG than W constant to constrain general uh, dark matter models. Uh, maybe nowadays it's not happening anymore, but in the past it was very common. Oh, let's let's um, put some constraints on the equation of state of dark matter, then you choose uh, W constant. The, 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 it has no, no physical meaning, right? Uh, you expect uh, if dark matter is, a, is made from particles, you expect this to be hot in the past and, okay, in the thermal scenario, okay? Then uh, you expect that to be hot in the beginning and much colder nowadays. So RRG could do that pretty well. And thanks. So questions for Ronaldo? <clears throat> In any case, you are assuming a thermal assumption in the, when you did this, or the, because of course. Yeah, yeah. In the very beginning, it was kind of hidden because <clears throat> I didn't express that uh, pretty clearly. Because the the initial idea is, is is a gas bouncing off a wall, then you compute the pressure. Then, of course, we we rephrase that in terms of a distribution function, 
but all these ideas of uh, thermal equilibrium and uh, the, the thermal because you can produce uh, the dark matter from out of equilibrium. Yeah, yeah. Case, then in this case, it would it, it would be completely different. Um, I don't know if you could apply this. Uh, then it, it's it's not applicable. More questions. No, I, I think you mentioned at the end, but uh, so if you want to use word dark matter, perhaps to to fit better with the large scale structure. Or, mm -hmm. So, in which sense uh, is this, uh, let's say, much better on the cold dark matter scenario? Well, for instance, you let's make an analogy with dark energy. You say, okay, I, I think dark energy is uh, cosmological constant, so I set W equal minus one and end of story. But then you start to, okay, maybe it's not cosmological constant, so let's put some parameterization for that. Then you can, with RRG, you can make more or less the same thing, having behind this idea that it was, it, it's, uh, it's um, dark matter is made from particles, uh, that were produced in thermal equilibrium, and then they were hotter in the beginning and much colder now. Then you have the, the proper physical evolution for that with RRG. And then you can uh, put constraints on beta or M, uh, and then it's, it has a strong uh, physical sense in this, I think. Thank you. No, no, my question is... So if you, can I just comment a little bit? So, uh, so warm dark matter has different features from cold dark matter in circular <coughs> formation, right? So it suppresses some scales in principle. Um, now, the thing is that uh, when you go to small scales, where this thing, when you really could, would want to see a difference between warm and cold dark matter, you cannot trust this linear perturbation theory anymore. Because everything he did was in so, the so-called linear perturbation theory, which fails at small scales, so small scales of a galaxy, for instance. It doesn't work anymore. So you have to do really n-body simulations. Oh, yeah, then. In order to get an idea. <clears throat> and but when you do n-body simulations, then this decrease in the, uh, the suppression due to free streaming, it comes back up because of gravity. And you don't really see much of a difference, unfortunately. So. Um, <laughs> But right. still, you have this Lyman alpha data. The, Ly the Lyman alpha, so that's very interesting. So the Lyman alpha are uh, bounds from uh, high redshift quasars. And at high redshift, you are the linear regime. Yeah. <clears throat> so then you can use uh, then linear perturbation sense, theory, yeah. and you get a bound, which is actually not three. It's like it's a bit more. It's yeah. a bit more, like yeah. seven. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit. I let him comment because he was my advisor, so. <laughs> <laughs> the hierarchy remains. <laughs> Can you go back at uh, slide 15? All right. Oh. 15, yeah, OK. OK, so I guess the red line is the fit with this data of the RRG model, right? Mm -hmm. And this is for the acoustic uh, wave oscillations. Sorry, wh what? Well, you, you're talking about the power spectrum. Yeah. And this is the power spectrum for the acoustic oscillations, so? Uh, you mean BAO? Um, so, yeah. Uh, you cannot see there, but there are some bumps in the, the power spectrum due to barium acoustic oscillations that, yeah, mm -hmm. they are very small. In this case, they don't appear around the uh, 0.1 or, or maybe a bit more to the, to the right. But at, on, on that scales, uh, for this uh, mass scale for particles, uh, th there would be no effect, only on very, very small scales. So then... Should I interpret this as model that you don't need dark matter to understand these observations? No, no, no. You need dark matter for sure, but uh, you don't need to consider any deviation on, on these large scales, any deviation from, from cold. Oh, okay. Co well, uh, Non-cold dark matter. CDM? 
with the Lando CDM parameters of background, and that's where you... Yeah, yeah, you, you, okay. you, you are more or less at the edge of uh, maybe you can see something different. Actually, whenever you get better data here, you, the, this mass goes up. So it's like uh, maybe you are going towards just cold dark matter, but you are putting limits on, on mass parameter or B parameter. Okay. So the first one is close to seven, you say? Sorry? No, I remember that there was this proposal by Shaposhnikov to put a seven KV in a sterile neutrino, a star matter, so then... Uh, oh, there would uh, be no effect on this. Uh, seven KV, probably. Seven KV, no. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard that the bound was close to seven, but... Uh, the, the bound is close to seven. So. Uh, but here there is a... I don't remember. I think there is a, some, some specific scenario for this value. If you consider kind of uh, no, you can look uh, for the discussion session. Yeah. Stuff. Okay. Very good. Just look at papers by VL. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is by VL, but a bit old. They're, they're old newer papers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Some more questions? Yes. yes. Just question about the statistical confidence uh, of this limit. I mean, we're talking about it, what, what are possible uncertainties and how, how, how robust this limit will, is it like? Uh, you, you, you don't close any ellipses with this. Uh, it's just upper limits. It has to be small, smaller than, than some value. Okay, if it's lower then, then your, yeah. uh, your um, kind of, uh, you have like several sigma deviations from the kind of feet which you do or what, I mean, kind of. What's happening? There, as I remember, of course, maybe if in this paper there is, but um, for our, our GI, there is no complete statistical analysis yet. But uh, actually, I don't remember quite. Well. But as I remember, uh, this is just an upper bound. You, you don't close your statistical distribution with the data available. When you, when, when, so, when, when you said, OK, yeah. all right. So basically, if you. You're talking about that this is lower bound, right? Yeah. Lower bound, not the upper one. So, so if you are below this, you kind of already start. Already yeah, yeah. Your, your feet, it has your, to be. Your, 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 your in be terms of mass, uh, because there's mass and the, they go inverse <laughs> with B and mass. Uh, yeah. In terms of mass, yeah, your mass has to be uh, higher than this. So this is okay. Just what you get from from data. More questions. So I have just a simple question that maybe you can answer during the discussion session. Um, so you have this assumption that all the particles in the gas have the same momenta, right? But then if you look at the Maxwell distribution of velocities, it's very different from that. And that's very important for indirect detection. Sorry, direct detection ah, yeah, yeah, okay. of dark matter. So this would change probably. everything. Ah, yeah, yeah, probably. So, <laughs> because you are direct detection, because you want to look for low mass thresholds, you want to look at the tail, as you explained yeah. to me. And these guys have the same, the, the other. So, so you yeah, think yeah, this assumption sure. would not hold in our galaxy for warm dark matter? Okay. In galaxies, this don't, don't work. Yeah. So you would recover, say, the max value and distribution. Yeah. That makes sense. OK. Okay. Yeah, when you go to nonlinear regime. Uh, uh, Sasha, I think you have to talk in the microphone because Carlos didn't hear. Uh, what? What? Don't <laughs> this one is not related to direct detection uh, because in uh, our yeah. galaxy it's mixed. Yeah. I think this picture is, should be stopped at the time of structure formation because so, uh, gravity yeah. interaction changes velocity and everything is it's mixed. Yeah. yeah, regarding what Rogério said is that if you if you want to compute interactions of this kind of particles, then the distribution makes a lot of difference. But here is just gravity, so gravity doesn't care if, if you have hair or not. So just your weight. Thank you, Sasha. Okay, so uh, let's thank uh, Ronaldo again for the talk. So for lunch, you know, you have you have some uh, suggestions in the in the uh, material that you received.